<laughs> Welcome to Horrors Yet Unseen, the podcast where we assign each other horror movies to watch and then talk about it so our spouses don't have to listen to us go on and on and on about scary stuff they don't like. I'm Zach. And I'm Steve. Let's talk about some scary movies. By the way, there will absolutely be spoilers in this show. You have been warned. Like corn's grass. Like what? Corn is a type of grass. No, it's it not. Was, yeah. It's in the okay. family of grass. And the... Uh, How do you the, know that? The indigenous people in... I, I, I contain multitudes, bro. <clears throat> the the family yeah. of grass that so the 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 indigenous people of North and South America cultivated it over t- like hundreds of years to the point where it is now. Um, but it just started out as a grass that had some big seeds on it, and then um, kale, kohlrabi, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage—they all come from the same plant. It's all like it's all the same plant. Originally, they're all cultivars of, of a certain kind of mustard uh, grass or mustard plant. It was slowly cultivated over time. Oh, Brussels sprouts also. All the same plant. They're called brassica uh, vegetables. And they all come from the same plant. That you can, you, and you could, they've shown this how you can start from that plant again and repropagate all that stuff over lots of generations of growth. All the exact same thing. Isn't that amazing? I feel like this is the point where the little star would fly over our screen and be like the more you know yeah it's amazing i it's well that's not as amazing as the fact that you have that just locked and loaded ready to rock at any point just that that like if you were going to a party that that would be your anecdote like you'd be like you'd be the corn is grass guy (laughs) it's it's a good i'm not saying anything bad about it i'm saying it it drew me in because you're like corn is grass what this guy's crazy and then you realize oh you know he's talking about broccoli now and brussels sprouts (laughs) being the same from mustard plants and and and, oh i got another one for you here we go see these this is wild oranges Oranges. okay okay so um oranges are are also steve these are oranges are also a cultivar (laughs) they're not native to anything they are like combination of like a kind of several kinds of citrus they kind of mush them together and they finally formed a, an orange it has like a lot sweeter instead of a lot more tart it was like a, a lemon and a lime and stuff and also the navel oranges are the ones without the seeds every single navel orange on the planet comes as a cutting from a single tree in south america there's one tree that just happened to start producing fruit that had no seeds in it everybody's like this is awesome and so they started taking it, selling it off. And there's one, there's, so there's one tree that it came from. And this, so they're all genetically identical. This has been Fun Facts with Steve. I don't know what to say. Yeah, this has been Fun Facts with Steve. Exactly. I don't know what to say to any of that. There, there may be a reason that my son watches hundreds of videos about weird facts. Maybe it's his dad. Mm. There are 119 grooves on the edge of a quarter, Zach. Around the side, 119, count them. Well, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too sure what to do with any of that knowledge, but now, I have it now, and you know. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not also too sure how to segue out of that into just anything else. No, you don't, you don't have to segue out of anything. Okay. None of this is going to make it into the show. Oh, well, you keep saying that, and yet a lot makes it into the show. A lot more makes it into the show than I freaking think, and that makes me nervous. Well, let's let's talk about some movie stuff. Or Dude, some let's talk about some things, movie stuff. Things. What, did, you, did you get a chance, a chance to watch anything this week? I you watched a movie. I watched two things this week. Oh. I feel like it's dwindling. 
That's Last fine. week I watched three things. This week I watched. That just two. means that just means you actually have a life. Yes, yes, <laughs> I do. That is that is true. I have somewhat of a life. I I watched uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Right. Went to see that, and then I saw. I heard Fresh. you hated it. I hated that movie. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely shouldn't have posted it on our on our Instagram. You know, <laughs> I definitely shouldn't have posted it on our Instagram. Why is that? You know, just I, I apparently it's not a horror movie and it doesn't belong in just it doesn't belong on our on our channel. You know, I mean, nobody would say that. Yeah, you're right. Nobody, nobody would say that. I mean, I must be just I mean, delusional. Maybe my buddy Nick, you know, dude. Yeah, your boy Nick. I mean, he get, forgive the guy. He's a, he's like snarkiness, you know. Like it's just a thing. Listen, I'll do what I want. Okay, that's that's first. Okay. Wow. Wow. I'll do what I want. Okay. Second, I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's both one and two. This is America, and I'll do what I want. Okay, it's my own podcast. It's my own Instagram. I'll do what I want. Like it's. <laughs> well, then, if you're gonna do what you we want, want if we we also came whatever. up with this rule. Like we came up with this rule that like if a movie is kind of in that in that. Also, here's the here's the deal. That movie had more blood in it than some of the horror movies I've seen. Okay, so <laughs> let's be honest yeah. with ourselves. I, here's the here's the rule. You should do what you want. I do what I want, man. I freaking just yeah. do what I want. I will do so, what I want. You know, f the haters. Well, screw those sometimes guys. that might be that. Depending on who the haters are, I don't want to be too aggressive. Oh well, no, you should be. I mean, you, you gotta you gotta squash it while it's while the you gotta pull the pull the weed while it's small. Okay, let Here's it grow the too big. Do it's you, gonna be tear up everything else. I mean, that's that's a parable in the Bible. Do you want me to squash that bug now? Then. Do you want me to no. go on Instagram and completely squash that bug? Because I will with with complete and total disdain. Wow, dude! You said squash it. I mean, I well, assumed what do you mean? that what, meant what scorched earth. Mean? I assumed that that meant you wanted me to completely annihilate the bridge between me and this other guy. Wow! No, that, is that that's... not is that not what you do when you uproot a root or when you uproot a, a weed? Is you completely well, annihilate it? Do you do you go yeah. to and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I have to, I have to pull you from the earth, and you are no longer allowed to grow. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're what you're pulling out. Are you pulling out your connection to the being concerned about the thing? Or are you pulling out this person's eyebrows? I'm or pulling you... out the idea that this person is human and has feelings oh, and wow. I want to hurt so, yeah, absolutely that's, everything that they're about. That's a lot more levels than I was thinking. <laughs> Listen, I, mean, I said I was thinking, scorched like, earth. You pull so, out the weed of the feeling that that matters. Oh, okay. So you need to define your terms because I, I, I immediately went, because, I'm going to go be an a-hole as much as I can. Because you have been uh, watching too many scary movies and you have learned that it probably I'm guessing a lot of violent video games as well that have no, it's just my dad. It's just me and my person. daddy issues is all it really is. <laughs> I just take all of my aggression. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm in there. Nick, Nick is a good guy. <laughs> Nick's a good guy. Yeah. Except for that profile picture where he's not smiling, bro. You got to smile, dude. Okay. I'm just going to be honest with you from just a dude to another dude. Return those dogs to their owner. Cause it looks like you kidnapped them. And then also, Smile. I know. I know that telling people to smile in 2024 not necessarily great, but also, you know, it goes a long way. So please do it. Are you smiling? If someone's, ta- if someone's taking a picture of you, smile. Show some teeth. Like just, gosh, that's the only that. Listen, that's the only you sass so that I'm controlling, go- aren't you? I know it's the only sass that I'm going to like because I'm just being a goober. I don't mean it. Like I'm just being. I'm just being silly. Oh boy. Thought I knew you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Listen, a little bit of a little bit of needless aggression is is just funny to me sometimes. Not always. Sometimes it crosses the line. Sometimes you're not really feeling it, you know? So aside from the uh Instagram like 
controversy. It was. It also made me laugh too when he was like, "Hey, this is not a horror." And I'm like, "Who are you, dude? Who is that? What's happening?" And then you commented like, "Ha ha, blah blah blah, whatever." And I'm like, "What? What is Steve's relationship with this guy?" And I'm like, what's happening? Did I miss something? Am I being pranked? <laughs> well, he said, "Wait a second, this isn't a horror movie." Yeah, and I and I replied, "I don't know. Zach's gets scared pretty easily." It was the fun. It was so funny to me. Yeah. Well, you replied, yeah. "You're right," but I thought it was worth reviewing. Yeah, because I didn't want to be like, "Hey, you freaking turd! Shut the heck up! Go back to kindergarten where you no, learn that if you don't have anything is, nice to say, then shut your mouth." Like the proper response is just to <laughs> chuckle at it because it's a joke. I know, but also I was not in the mood for it, <laughs> and I felt I felt a particular way about it. But now I'm laughing. Well, uh, so uh, this is where you say, hey, Steve, what did you watch this week? That's, <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. Give, give me uh-huh. a chance, dude. All I right. Gotta, hey, Steve. I prompt you everything. I swear. Hey, Steve, what did you watch this week? Uh, no, I won't really want to tell you. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye. Uh, so we. Okay. The first one I'm going to tell you about. Trust me. The name is horrible, but it's it's a it's a funny, funny horror movie. Listen, okay? I already saw the movie The Scrotum. It's not funny. Okay, this is not the Scrotum. This is called our, Okay, then how about this? I already saw the movie The Special. And it's not funny. Okay, this. The, I'm just the, bringing the, up two very two very realistic recommendations that you've given me. I will be clear. I did not recommend scrotum or <laughs> the special you basically did you told me about them and therefore scrotum. it was a recommend listen you told me about them and therefore it's a recommendation and and i told you but i told you the special i i, I recommended you i can pull up the tape <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand I, I told you not to watch the special <laughs> you can't do that steve you know okay. i'm super curious this song, i will this trust song, you here though this movie is called butt boy I don't want to watch it. <laughs> it is so funny, Zach. It's it's like it's one of these movies. It like it acts like it's taking itself seriously, seriously, but it's clearly not. You know, um, it's called Butt Boy. <laughs> it's surprisingly hilarious. Are we running out of ideas? Are we running out of ideas? No, no. Okay, Here, here's the here's okay premise. Really, ready? Oh gosh! And it's on um mm. it's on Prime and Freebie, etc. Okay. Detective Fox loves work and alcohol. After he goes to AA, his sponsor, Chip, becomes a suspect in his investigation for a missing child. Fox believes people are disappearing up Chip's butt. <laughs> okay. I'm this back dude, in. I'm back dude. in. <laughs> with that, with that, I'm, I'm out with the title, but I'm in with the synopsis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Title could have gone better, right? The butt boy is definitely not <laughs> the type of title that you're going for. But right. I'm also um, judging a book by its cover. You know what I mean? Right. And so the <laughs> <laughs> what? Also, what's the, your what, what prompted you to watch Butt Boy? So I okay. <laughs> Prime Video just keeps recommending me like stupid, funny uh, horror movies. Okay. Because I watched like um, the Knights of Bad Astem, and I watched. Uh, the, I guess really, I realize all these have really crass names. I watched um, <laughs> Uncle Peckerhead, which was hilarious. <laughs> oh, that, that is a funny movie, dude. dude um, uh, and then I watched, uh, uh, I forgot, a couple of those. Anyway, it ke- just kept re- recommending this constantly. And I'm like, what? Maybe I'll give you a try. And so I started watching it and it's so funny. This dude, like, I can't even I can't even get into it because it's just you have to see it. Okay. You have to see it. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I start watching Butt Boy and my wife comes in the living room and she's like, We need to talk <laughs> about the content that you're watching. It's not it's a very cheaply made movie, I can tell. I mean, it's I mean, it looks good. Oh, you don't good say you don't it's say qu- it's a cheaply made movie. It's good quality, but like they don't have like um 
it's it's they, they never show anybody anything going up the guy's butt. They never, and it's funny because they never explain how how do people get into his butt and what happens after they get in there. Um, it's just really funny. So, so who it's is so butt ridiculous. boy? The dude on the cover of the the poster. That's butt boy. The guy. Yeah, in the it, it actually it kind of it kind of it kind of becomes more or less like a a, a serial killer slash uh, evil. Um, superhero type situation, like like a not evil, like a, a super villain sort of thing. Like he's 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 a bad guy. He becomes kind of bad, and it's definitely he's he's got like some superpower that he can like suck things up his butt. Steve, and also, he has, be honest, like that's such a powerful fart that he like knocks people over. It's funny. This. I would have never asked you that question. What did you watch this week? <laughs> I known that you were going to start with, but boy, I fear that it may. I hope that it gets better from here. I hope that you that you watched better stuff. I don't trust that you did, though. Well, it really kind of went up. I mean, we're, you can't go downhill from there. You can't, right? I think you can. Mm. Maybe I haven't well, watched it yet. I didn't but... watch Scrotum, so I don't know. So no one needs to watch that movie. <laughs> yeah. So then I, and I watched uh, Role Models, which is a Paul Rudd movie from 2008. <clears throat> it was okay. It was, you know, it's fine. Um, and then, but it was, it was, it was funny. And then I watched Antiviral, which is a movie by Brandon Cronenberg. And I watched that movie because he also did Possessor. Right. And I really like Possessor. But Antiviral was just too weird. Uh, it's like sort of a weird future where this guy works for a company that will sell you and infect you with the exact same infection that like celebrities have gotten. So say Beyonce got the flu. Beyonce would come to this company and sell like a little bit of her blood with the flu in it. And they would keep it on hand and they would they process it so it can't get so it's not going to spread anymore it'll, it'll all just infect one person and then they come in and they they choose from a like array of diseases that Beyonce has had if you're obsessed with Beyonce and they, like you get you choose which one you got want to get infected with so you get the exact same infection that Beyonce had and you're paying yeah. top dollar for these infections right right and it's just I mean, this it's about, is a heck of a service right and they also take um, stem cells from celebrities and they grow meat. And people go to the store, they go to the restaurant and go, I'll have a tri-tip of, um, you know, Keanu Reeves or something. Okay. Well, it's the, so I gave it like one and a half stars. It's not, it's not worth watching. It was what, slow. How many confusing. stars did how many stars did you give Butt Boy? Three and a half. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we're done with this podcast. This is over. <laughs> this whole fact. <laughs> choking. Okay. Then I saw. Oh my gosh. I, you are right? choking on my own spit over here. <laughs> Almost died. I saw, I saw the TV glow. Okay. Which might be one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah. It's a decent movie. I mean, not I should say maybe not my favorite. It's not my favorite movies, but it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. I'll say it that way. It's a, yeah. it's, you get the difference. Mm -hmm. Like I know it's just a super super well done movie. It did things that I've never seen before. It was very innovative and and like very very cl clever and and unique. Um, but it it ru it ruined the mood of everyone in my family. I ruined it. Um, I would because, like to expand on this issue. You wrote it down. Yeah. That so, it, ru it ruined your family's mood, and I, I very much want to know what happened. So, if you haven't seen the movie, it's 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 weird. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of hard to follow. You realize kind of partway through that it's sort of an allegory, sort of not. It's telling it's kind of telling the story of this kid or these two people, really. Um. And one of, one of them, you find out, is a trans person who's afraid to come out 
or afraid to even admit it to themselves type of thing. And the other person is a, is a the, the gal in the situation is a, um, she's a lesbian and, but they're both in high school when it starts out and they, um, they're obsessed with this TV show called, um, the pink opaque. And long story short, you can watch it and like have no clue what it, what, what it was about. And it was still a good movie. It's still very interesting from a, like a sci-fi ish perspective. It's listed as horror, but I don't, I don't see why it's necessarily a horror movie, but, um, I mean, th- there are some horrific aspects to it, I guess, but throughout the entire thing, you just see this person, the, uh, the main character, um, played by justice Smith, who's just fantastic by the way. Um, he, uh, or they, she, whatever the, he, he, the whole time he's, he's a, he's a, I'm not sure how to say it. He he's trying to hold off the feeling that he is trans. Um, and then this whole idea going through the movie of the um the the dark place, this the scary place is where you can't be yourself and you want to get they want to get to the pink opaque sort of area where they can be themselves. It's it's really hard to explain, but long story short, it's it makes it very clear that this person did not feel like they could be themselves. And it was very sad the way mm-hmm. their life ended up because they were just full of anxiety constantly and just unhappy and lived like into their forties or fifties working at this place, cleaning up ball pits and, and, and stuff not fulfilled. Um, didn't take chances to, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just the story of what could happen or what happens to people when they don't feel like they can be themselves. And my whole family is very, um, we're very, we're trying to be very much allies of the LGBTQ, uh, world. Um, you know, my, my daughter, uh, at least my daughter, you know, my daughter is, is part of the LGBTQ alphabet mafia. Whatever you want to call it. Um, and mm-hmm. so it's very important to us that, that people are allowed to be who they are and not shamed out of it, et cetera. Of course. This whole movie, um, the dad shames him constantly. Like the dad has like one line in the whole movie and he's like, isn't that TV show for girls? <laughs> you know? Right. And um, just seeing the relationship between these two is, is beautiful, but seeing that how she goes and, and follows the dream of, of, becoming who she who she truly is and then he stays behind and how sad it is and like right near the end where you start seeing what what that's all coming out coming in into he walks down the street and somebody has written on the 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 ground there's still time it's like that that kind of got me because i've i know personally i know people who took decades to admit to themselves who they really are. And after they did, their lives were so much better, even though they were, you know, maybe big, maybe, uh, uh, oppressed more after they came out. Mm -hmm. But before that, they're just like, their life was just sad and they're frustrated and not happy. And, but seeing this guy who did not do that and it's, it's written and directed by, um, a trans woman who, um, Showed one is it's kind of, I guess it's kind of a trilogy of movies that she's doing. The first one she did, and I haven't seen it yet, is um, "We're All Going to the World's Fair," so it came out in twenty twenty one, and another A twenty four movie, correct? And uh, it's going to be a tril the trilogy. So the first one is kind of noticing about about noticing who you are, and the second one I saw this TV glow is all about the destructive nature of shame of keeping people in, uh, in the closet and making them feel less than and choosing to not be yourself and how dark that can get. Mm. Uh, but the, apparently the third one, which is an un- unnamed movie, it's not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, but it, apparently it's in works. Um, it's, it's going to be a pot more positive as far like, like here's how beautiful life can be when you are, who you are instead of 
trying to pretend like that doesn't matter to you, whatever. Right. So it it made my son, my son pretty angry because he's got a couple friends who are trans, and um, they are like one of them is very um very controlled by their their parents and feels like trash all the time and you know i i know like very lighthearted funny podcasts but this you know it's a it's a it's a sad subject with the number of suicides and stuff that happen with people yeah in that community that are not allowed to to express themselves so that 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 movie was rough for for our family because of that so but we we, we got over it um and well, the, the initial feeling anyway <laughs> But, um, but actually I, I looked at, I, I looked at the reviews for this movie and it's got massively good reviews. I gave it five stars, but the first review that I saw, um, this person says, my name is Julie. I'm a trans woman. And tonight is the first time I've said those words to anyone other than myself after watching this movie. Dang. And like and she she continues to it's quite a long review but it's it's she talks about how she watched this movie and realized I, that could be me but there is still time and she pulled herself out of that and like she's like can be she could be who she truly is now and I'm like that I just got it's hit me in the feels so it's it's a sad movie if you leave it there. If you don't, if you, if you see it as just talking about how sad life can be, that's one thing. But if it, if you see it as like, uh, encouragement to move past that and be who you are, like, please don't let this happen to you sort of thing. Right. That, that's, that's what the director was going for. And I thought that was really, really good. Um, moving on. Uh, I saw Schlock, which is completely different. <laughs> Dude, we need to do an entire episode on schlock. (laughs) Okay. It was, I don't know how I went down this, this rabbit hole, but it's directed by John Landis, who has done all kinds of like animal house trading places. He directed the thriller uh, video for Michael Jackson, three amigos, uh, um, blues brothers. Oh, I, I started down this path because he's the director of American Wolf and Werewolf in London that we reviewed last time. Yeah. But this is his first movie that he put out, 1973. And it is so freaking ridiculous and so funny. If it, it has very strong Monty Python vibes. Well, I'm going to love it. Oh, it's so funny, dude. Um, Schlock. <laughs> I th- I sent you that that clip. There, like the, the lines. There's some lines in this funny that, that are, movie that was are so that funny from there. Schlock. Yeah, yeah. Oh my like, I was gosh! Like, Look, banana peel. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and like at the beginning, it shows all these dead bodies laying like in this park, and they're clearly just people who are like just laying there. There's no blood or anything in the whole thing. And, and um, <laughs> this, like this TV reporter, he's like. Horrible thing happened today. 250 bodies were discovered at the Existential Bowling League annual picnic. What is this movie? <laughs> like, what? Uh, it's so funny. It's so. It's, right, it, well, it, I think you'll. I think you'll really like it. So I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna watch it. I'm, I'm gonna put it on my. Put it on my list now. It was really good. Um, and then I saw. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, which was hundred percent fantastic. I need to watch this. Fantastic! It's on your watch wish list. Yeah, but it was so fun, dude. It was so fun. It had it's very much um, the babysitter vibes. Okay, babysitter uh, uh, with. I mean, he's got these three boys and uh, their hot older friend woman who is a badass, and she. Um, I I like like, her, her her character was great, but, um, she, uh, they, I don't know. It's funny. It's a funny zombie movie. Um, there, (laughs) there's this one scene with, um, a guy, (laughs) he's falling out a window (laughs) and like the zombies are at the window and he grabs something to hold on to, to keep from falling out the window. 
And my son and I screamed in pain the entire time watching that moment. That moment. No. <laughs> it's so gross, dude. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Anyway, okay. That, it was I'm definitely gonna have to put it on my so list. So good. Um, and then I saw the night shift, which is a scary one. Dude, very night the shift. new one. You, you've seen that, yeah. I've seen night shift, yeah. That's good. It's a, I, it's a love pretty the twist. good movie. Yeah. Great twist. Uh-huh. If you haven't seen it, you know, no spoilers, but great twist. Yeah. And then I saw a movie called Paranormal Activity. Which um you've seen. I see that. I have, yes. I want I want to know about popcorn buckets. Well, I just didn't know how many how many movie popcorn buckets were actually out there. I mean, there's some pretty pretty cool ones out there. The xenomorphs are finally on on the on the uh on the uh eBay's. Really? Yeah, for like there were there were xenomorphs? Eighty five dollars, yeah. So when I went to see Deadpool and Wolverine, there were like xenomorph heads. Really? As popcorn buckets. You can buy them for like twenty five bucks. They're you going on e they're going on eBay for somewhere between eighty and a hundred dollars. Dude. Like Is that, and, is that movie and, already out? Uh Alien Romulus? I don't think it's yeah. out yet. No. Oh wow. But I mean I look. I picked one up. I'm standing in line to get concessions, and I picked one up, and I was looking at it, and I was like, "There's no way." I mean, not even a sliver of a chance. I would pay a bunch of money for this popcorn bucket. It's just plastic. <laughs> like it's just shaped plastic, and but also like I'm not a big. Like, I'm not g giant in the Alien franchise. Right. But, like, it's not an interesting popcorn bucket to me. Right. So. It's just the head with a flap on the top, right? Basically. Yeah. Like, there are way more interesting popcorn buckets, I guess. But, yeah. Well, what have we learned from this situation, Zach? Well, we've learned that. You need if you need if you really want a popcorn bucket, you got to camp out. You got to you got to go go there, or you got to have some sort of like you got to make a friend inside the movie theater who works there in order to get one. Okay, if you're going to eBay, if you're going to eBay to buy your popcorn bucket post movie. Mm -hmm. Sucker. You're a sucker is really what you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to break that to you to, to hurt people's feelings. Maybe I don't really know. Um, but like there are two people who are watching this hundred dollar popcorn bucket, hundred dollars Xenomorph alien Romulus popcorn bucket. It is $6 and 33 cents for shipping. So not only are you paying a, 75 more dollars than you would if you went to the movie theater and bought it. But you're also paying for shipping. How much, like, man, I just. So what, 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 what I would like you to learn from this, Zach, is if you see the uh, popcorn bucket that is in any way, shape or form, not, not a popcorn bucket, then you buy it and you sell it on eBay and make, make bank. Listen, no, I would never do that. It's called taking advantage of people. Yeah, I know. That's I what capitalism is all about, dude. I understand that. But I think we could just be better as a, as a people group. <laughs> I think it would just be better. Because it, it's, it's the problem, it, it's the problem that, that you're paying $100 and then shipping. Like, these people are... This guy has 82 reviews. 100% positive on eBay. Which is... Yep. Not something to, you know. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? But he goes a hundred dollars or best offer. Here's an offer: twenty six dollars. I'll give you a dollar, but I'm not paying for shipping. Like at the end of the day, you're just you're charging me a hundred dollars for this popcorn bucket, and then I also on top of that, here's one for ninety five dollars plus nine dollars for shipping. 
Like, screw you, dude. See, I like to think of it as not taking advantage of people, but you're giving the people what they want. You're helping them out, you know? Steve. You're, you're fulfilling dreams, Zach. I have I qualms with that. I have qualms with that. Because <laughs> no, you're not. Because <laughs> no, you're not. Anyway, yeah. So, also, like, some of these popcorn, there's, there's a... Uh, I mean, here's one, 2024, Universal Studios, Transformers, Bumblebee, uh, you know, $59.19. Is it, that's a pretty specific price. Wow. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's a popcorn bucket that is from a Minions movie. 19 bucks. See, that's not bad. Yeah. Plus $19.99 for sure. <laughs> So yeah, really you're going to spend 40 bucks. Dude, that's that's you're ripping people off. See, that's ripping people off. That's Here we go. 28.90. $28.90 plus free shipping. That's good for a yeah. Yeah. That's good for a Despicable Me 4 Mega Mel Minion popcorn bucket. Here's a, here's the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire Slammer popcorn bucket that I did not get to get because freaking they sold out of them. 50 bucks free shipping. You see what you could do is just wait like a couple months before until people start not caring about it anymore. And then you get it for like way cheaper. That or, or I just understand that I missed my opportunity and I need to learn from that. And don't give up. Don't give up. I'm not giving up. I'm giving giving up on this one. I will get them on the next one because popcorn buckets are having their moment. I guess. Yeah. So weird. Steve, why do you think that something is wrong with me for wanting to be born on the 14th of the month? I don't understand. Okay, Zach. What's the okay. problem? Why do you want to be born on the 14th of the month? Because I want a free ticket to see the movie Long Legs. <laughs> what? Did you not know this? No. Okay. If you're born on the 14th of the month, Neon is giving people who are born on the 14th of the month free tickets to go see the movie long legs. Okay. I had no idea. Yeah. So he wrote in our notes, Zach wishes he was born on the 14th of the month, but the birthday gods don't shine on him like that. Okay. I'm like, but, okay, hold on. But then Zach's you wrote down. With, well, hold on. This is my thought process. Okay. Okay. Got it. I thought, okay, Zach is obsessed so bad with the movie long legs that he wishes he was born on the 14th of the month. So he would be a target for the killer. No. So I wrote down, like, did Zach have, Zach have a death wish? <laughs> yeah. Does he have a life size doll of himself when he was nine? <laughs> okay, no, so I feel, I, like, I I feel much better about your your mental state now. So Yeah. It's, it's not, <laughs> I, I can still be troubled at the end of the day. Let's be honest with ourselves. But, yeah, the reason is because I want to, yeah, I mean, I could just go fake ID, right? But, you know. It's a lot of effort to just get a free ticket to a movie that's probably yeah. going to be coming out soon. It's already on pre-order. Yeah, I saw that. It's already I and I almost did it. It was fourteen or twenty four ninety nine. I almost pre-ordered it on iTunes. The problem is, is that I couldn't see what the extra content was going to be, or if there was going to be extra content. And I didn't know whether or not I didn't want to spend twenty five bucks in the movie, and there not be extra features, there not be director stuff, there not be Uh, like Mm -hmm. I don't I want deleted scenes, I want the quote unquote DVD features, the Blu Ray Mm -hmm. feature special features, but in digital form. And a lot of the time, Mm -hmm. those types of movies will only keep those special features in the DVD, and they won't put them on digital. And so I didn't right. just want to spend 25 bucks on the movie. It's worth $25, but I wanted to also get some extra content. Right. So the question is, do I buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out to Blu-ray just to get those special features? Or do I just wait for it to... My thought process was I'll wait for it to actually not be pre-order for it to actually mm-hmm. finally come out to digital release and see what the special features actually are. Mm-hmm. Cause maybe they're just, 
with being withholding as far as the special features are concerned until it finally releases. The price isn't going to go up from twenty four ninety nine. Knock on wood, you know. <laughs> but still, yeah, that's that's it. That's the reason. Is not because I want to. I have a life size doll of myself from when I was nine, or if I have a, you know, a death wish. It's just <laughs> I want a free ticket to go see, you know, the yeah. scariest movie of the last ten years. That's really it. That's really it. So you know. Well, I mean, you've already seen the movie. Yeah, but I want to watch it again. <laughs> and again, and again, and again. This movie's fantastic. A lot of times, like, uh, I know I've never bought any movies dig- digitally from any place but Apple. But I, and sometimes the, the, the digital movie has uh, the special stuff, uh, all the uh, extra stuff in it as part of the, the thing. Yeah, it just was. It just didn't reveal what that stuff was. I don't right. just want a director's commentary because that will be there. I don't just want a director's commentary and then the movie. I want some special features. I want them to dive into the movie a little bit more. Show me some behind the scenes. Like I want all of that DV, those DVD, Blu-ray special features in mm-hmm. digital form. You know, because there's the convenience of just hitting the play button versus yeah you know, pulling out the, cause I don't have my Blu-ray player hooked up. We don't ever really watch. We want only exclusively watch streamed stuff. Same. Yeah. So I don't want to have to like fish have out. There's the PS five. Yeah. Have. I don't want to have to fish out my Blu-ray player, yeah. plug it all into the TV and the outlet and blah, blah, blah. And then was it, was it switch, the, days? <laughs> switch the input from yeah. the from the Apple TV over to the like it's it's a lot it's too much yeah, yeah. it's too much it's too I much. do that I already do that every Halloween whenever I want to watch a Tales from the Crypt episode because I only have those on DVD all oh, right so if I want to watch one I don't I have to plug in the Blu-ray player which is yeah. fine you know so. Well, so, I'm glad Steve, you're not like I'm glad you're not wishing that you were part of the long legged world. So that's good. No, I, I don't want to be a part of that. That's it's it's too terrifying. But I do, you know, just want to be born on the 14th so I get a free free ticket. That's it. That's, I understand. That's it. So, what's your beef with? I'm curious. As you wrote this in the notes, that you have beef with the movie Signs. I'm assuming. Yes. And now you don't. I'm considering not having a beef anymore because okay. here's my beef. What's your beef? Yes. It's the whole Where's water the beef? Thing. The water. Okay. It's the water thing. Oh, so wow. I, I thought since I saw the movie the first time, I thought this is so freaking stupid. I mean, it was kind of like a, like it's an engaging movie along yeah. the way. But then the ending is like, why the heck would an alien species come across the universe to a planet that's mostly water, where the people are full of water, everything's full of water. And that's what is destroying them? Come on. Yeah. You know, Isn't that no very world of, sense. War of the Worlds? kind of? Wasn't it the way that, the, that that movie or the book ended well, was like the aliens were allergic to water? Like, so what happened with that was they were uh, the aliens... It was something very, very elementary, very simple. Like the basis of life, they were. It was they got. Uh, they it turns out they were. Uh, they they were susceptible to the what we call the common cold, and it killed them all. Right. Which is, I can understand that. Just not, you know. They just didn't realize that that would happen. Maybe, but um, that's different than. It. Than, yeah. You know, it's like, you know. It, so what? What they, would you? How would you have? What, how would you have okay. twisted that then? You're M. Night Shyamalan. Right. How would you have twisted that then? Twisted which? So you replace water with something. With, um, it's in, chi- in science? So in here's, science, here's you're thing. M. Night Shyamalan and you're going to, you're going to write this movie. What would you, re- what would you replace water with? You have to kill the alien I, somehow. No, here's the thing. Okay. This video that I saw, I, I know you, you can watch it, put it in the links. I'll put it in the show notes. Is it 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 argues that the it doesn't replace the water with something it replaces the aliens with something. 
Okay. He's like, these are not aliens. These are demons. Let's put that in your brain pan and think about it a little bit. So he did, he did a good job explaining it. So he's like, okay, so these, you never see spaceships. You never see any kind of alien technology. Nothing. You get these circles in the ground, but whatever. I mean, in the, in the fields. Mm-hmm. But the whole movie is very faith centric. Right. Um, the dad was a, was a, a pastor, priest, whatever, for a long time. He yeah. felt he lost his faith when his, his wife, wife died. Believe, uh, and, and she had like yeah. a prophecy when she died. And um, yeah. Right. And so there's swing, like this, all this swing away. Right? Yes. Yeah, swing away. Tell, tell whatever to swing away. Yada, yada. Yeah. And I don't know if that was a prophecy. That's just what I remember her saying. Yeah. Well, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He, and she so, was, so, she was basically losing consciousness kind of thing. And she was right. saying things. Right. But they she says, up, and, but those things t- ended up being what they needed to do. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's lots of overtones, undertones, whatever about having faith. And Shyamalan does that once in a while. He he's he's uh, at least was some variety of Christian for a while anyway. And he, uh, I think what he has said is he's kind of an agnostic, but he still finds it's important. Anyway, that's beside the point. But um, he, so all these things in the movie are about faith and everything. And then the the like the water they have in the and all the cups are in the the girl the little girl is the one who puts all these cups, half cups of water all over the place. Right. And it's mentioned in the movie that she's like the perfect child. She's like an angel. And so it's kind of like the, 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 the vibe is this is like holy water. Mm. And so by her, her putting this holy water all over the place and they get the holy water thrown at them and they, they die. And apparently I didn't watch the movie again to, to check on this, but the guy says in the video that in one of the, like, the, and like those in the background or something, there's like uh, news reports going on all the time mm-hmm. when near the end. And apparently it says uh, one of the, like a group in the Middle East has discovered an, an ancient method for using water to destroy these aliens. It's like, hmm, ancient method, like praying over it first or something. So within the, the world of the movie signs, the people who have holy water, they're throwing this on the, 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 the demons and it's destroying them. And they're, the demons even kind of like the demons slash aliens, they do things that are weird. Like an alien wouldn't like, there's one standing on the roof of somebody's house, just looking at you. What well, doesn't make sense. And why would the alien want to take the boy, you know, near the end? Like, and like, I don't know. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm thinking about it, but I think that that might be more accurate. I don't think it's about aliens. I think if if it's about demons, that makes a heck of a lot more sense. But that was not ever uh, really made explicit in the movie, which is fine. I, I don't. I'm not one to say you have to be explicit in the movie about everything. Yeah, kind of like when they're not. But this to me, this one was so vague that it's I don't know. Well, it's, I, it's, I it's explicit in the sense that we attribute crop circles to aliens and there right. are these creatures walking around. Like right. you have that shocking video of one caught on camera. Right. And yeah. So, the, and they kind of look a little alien esque. So you, you I think your brain just makes those connections, but yeah, I think you're right. They're they're they do lean very heavy into the faith based stuff. It makes logical sense to me that he's playing with both. Yeah, he's playing with both concepts instead of just one concept. Because the goal, because the the person that that Mel and Joaquin are in the beginning of the movie is not who they are in the end of the movie they're clearly right. going on this journey through something every time somebody he goes into that pharmacy and every time somebody's like father this and father that he's like i'm not a father anymore every right. time right. he shuts that down in a hard way because he's not going through some or he's going through something and 
you know, mm-hmm. then at the end of the movie, when he comes to terms with what's going on, and releases that stuff, those demons are gone. Yeah. So it make that makes complete sense. I'm going to have to watch the movie th- like through that lens now and see, see what I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a, there's an article about it too on screen rant that I'll put in there as well. Uh, How long has yeah, that movie was... been out that we're, we're like kind of just now coming to the idea that they're demons. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that movie has been out forever. But, yeah, you know. but apparently uh, this this article is like saying that if you if you look if you look at it, it's like there's hints everywhere. There's probably there's biblical imagery and um all this kind of stuff. So oh, cool. Yeah, I need. I still yeah. need. I I, need, I want to go watch the movie Trap. It's his latest one. I'm probably not going to get to see it soon enough. You know, but yeah. that's okay. I'm going to stay away from online because I don't want to know what the twist is. Yeah. I heard people talking about it in the movie theater and I'm like, shut up. I don't want to talk. I don't. It's, and they hadn't even seen cool. it. She was just basically dis- and it was, it's the same kind of stuff. Like we know that M night Shyamalan is known for his big twist endings or big, like the, the reveal, the twist. Right. And, but He's already revealed, quote unquote, revealed that the dad is the killer or has led us to believe that the dad is the killer. Right. In the movie trailer. So now we're like, oh, well, crap. What could be the twist then? Mm -hmm. Because they set this whole concert up to catch this killer. The trailer reveals that the quote unquote, the dad is the killer or that's what they're leading us to believe. So what could be the twist? And just in that lack of knowledge, we're guessing is what we do as as humans is what our brains just do naturally. Um, But they were speculating about what it could be. And I'm like, shut up. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything. I want to go into this movie completely just watching the trailer, more trailers being sold on it. I don't want to hear what people's speculations are, but, you know, it's a free country. Talk about whatever you want. I'm just going to stare off into the abyss and try to, you know, sing happy birthday to myself to distract whatever. I'm, I'm going to, because I don't want to know. But I'm going to try to stay offline because I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be able to go see it for a while now. Yeah. So. Well, last thing, I still have a massive problem with the movie The Village. Why? So freaking stupid. Okay. Let's go. Talk to me. It's one of my favorite movies. It, I like this movie. So I I love the movie all the way until the big reveal at the end. For real? Like when she yeah. falls over the fence and like Yeah, I'm like onto the street and the park right, ranger like, comes to pick her up. Right. I'm like yeah. that at first when I was watching, I'm like, that's a pretty cool thing. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like this is so like that would ne- how in the world could that happen? How in the mean? world How in the could this whole, like, this whole group of people be living there for dozens of years and have nobody, have no, like, there's no hint that they're elsewhere? Like, there's not technology? There's not, I mean, I guess I'm too stuck on the reality of it. The, like, the the possibility of that being someone being able to do that 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 close to actual civilization i guess i don't know it it the proximity it's, it's, to civilization is i don't know how long she walked in the woods yeah yeah maybe i should I don't know. give it another shot i don't know i don't know how long she walked in the woods it doesn't seem like she walked for a long like she's not i don't i don't remember her camping for a couple of days in order to get to wherever it's, she's it's vague specifically about going. Home. Yeah. And, but also she's such a big person in the community. You mean that n- no one went after her? No one? 
Like she's like the daughter of the guy. Yeah. And no one noticed that she was missing and no one went after her to scare her back to I could get caught up on that. I'm, I'm but, caught up on the, the the how I don't I don't think it's possible for them to keep that secret them for that long. That's so you don't, without like a, an airplane flying over the over something. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, apparently, like the 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 dad the dad and another guy like left once in a while. It's it's hinted at or something, or it's blatantly said that they like to get medicine or something once in a while. Yeah, I forget what it was. Yeah, so, but nobody uh, asked the question like, where are they going? Yeah, or I don't know. Me, I don't know. It's just the feasibility of it's, it's it's messing me up. Maybe I need to give it another shot. Because a lot of people really like the movie. I'm like, ah. it's it's I, it, it is it's because it was it was set as one thing. You think it's going to be this Puritan esque Quaker esque kind of culture, right? This movie, right. but then that's it's just this giant twist. That right, but the feels giant, but isn't necessarily the biggest reveal in the world. And uh, yeah, I I it's need a to rewatch reveal, the movie. You know, it is because you think that it's one thing, and then it turns out to be something else. Right? It's it's, it's what, that's what it's reveals yeah. are. I mean, well, that, yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole point. I think that's why he has this popularity is because he goes, "I'm going to pitch you this movie." You're gonna think it's one thing, and I'm gonna pull the rug out from underneath you, right. and it's gonna be this. Uh, it's gonna be this wildly other right. thing. Like you don't think that their actual, like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You don't think that in what knock knock. What's that movie called? My brain literally just stopped working. Knock on the door. Knock at the door. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the knock at the cabin. Knock, Knock the at the cabin. cabin. Yeah, yeah, you don't think that they're the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Right. Right. You just think because it's it's not set that way until they kind of like you real like oh yeah they really are mm-hmm. like there is this supernatural element to this movie. Yeah, yeah. I need to rewatch the village again. That's that was a good. His, that was a good. His I, I maybe I think I watched the village after watching Signs and being pissed off at it. <laughs> yeah, just and, back, maybe, back and I watched. Your... Yeah, and I. I I kind of I my general feeling about Shyamalan is that he is so intent on the big twist at the end. It's like he's trying to constantly recreate the the feeling in, that everybody felt with um sign or not signs with, with the yeah what's it I see dead people yeah the I see dead people one what is that the fifth el- the sixth element the sixth fifth what is it? It's a different movies. The yeah. fifth, the sixth sense. Sixth sense. Thank you. Yeah, not the fifth element. He, it's a Bruce Willis movie. Very different. I feel like he's trying to pull. Well, they're both Bruce Willis movies, right? But he's trying to pull. Are they? Uh, yeah, Bruce Willis is the sixth sense guy. Do they are? But oh my gosh, they are. <laughs> I, well, what a twist! Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I feel like he's trying to recreate that feeling and the vibe that everybody felt with that because it was a huge deal. But and yeah. it's like every he's so intent on the twist that he doesn't really think through how feasible the twist is. Like the best <laughs> twists in the world are like, duh, I, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, and. Yeah, but they come know. out of left field and and feel yeah, it's like it's like he gets a a, a a script or whatever, and he's like, "Oh, let's have a big twist at the end." Well, whatever. Um, I need to watch the Watchers. Is is uh, is him? Isn't it? Or is that his it's daughter? His daughter. Yeah, it's his daughter. I need to watch that one too. I got crappy reviews. Oh well, don't tell me that. I want to watch it. It got great reviews. Okay, well now you're just lying. It got, it got, I didn't read the reviews, so I have no idea. You're such a liar. <laughs> okay, well. You literally was just like it didn't get, and then yeah, okay, whatever, forget it. <laughs> All right, um, week movies of the week, movies of the week. Okay, uh, you are first, sir. Let us talk yes, about sir. meat. I mean, fresh, <laughs> fresh meat. Okay, so I really enjoyed this movie. Oh, it's good. Spoiler alert. We'll jump right to the end of the review. 
Um, <laughs> this movie's called Fresh. It is from 2022. And it has an 81% Rotten Tomato score. But not just that, it's also certified fresh. Hilarious. That's certified <laughs> fresh. It's called fresh. I laughed really hard at that. I was like, oh, certified fresh. The movie's called fresh. Ha <laughs> ha. It, it also has an 81% audience score. So both are at the at year to date, 81 and 81. 3.4 out of 5 on Letterbox, 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb. The IMDb synopsis of this movie is after quitting dating apps, a woman meets a or meets the supposedly perfect man. The woman meets that should be a supposedly perfect man. Uh and accepts not, his not invitation. The, she's the big perfect man. Well whatever. <laughs> she accepts his <laughs> she accepts his invitation to a romantic weekend getaway only to find that her new paramour uh, has been hiding some unusual appetites, and mm. I think that's a perfect that's a perfect synopsis because it it gives just enough away, just vague enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so movie breakdown. Uh, this movie follows a girl named Noah N O A, uh, who is stuck in a, a weird internet dating loop. Uh, the movie starts off with. Such an awkward dating moment um, when Noah goes out with a guy who tells her to bring cash to a Chinese restaurant because they only they only accept cash. And her and her friend kind of think that that's weird, but um, she clearly isn't having a very good time. And this dude is just super weird. Uh, he then steals her leftovers. <laughs> like. He takes her food and uses it. Oh, yeah, my, my roommate needs needs food, too, so I'll just take your food if you're not going to eat it, whatever. Like, doesn't ask her if she needs a box. It's such a weird interaction. And instead of uh, picking up on the vibe that she is giving him and also the words that she is saying, because she really tries to let him down kind of easy, he lashes out and the date ends really badly. And she literally is like, what the heck is going on at the end? And I'm like, I'm with you. because. What the heck was that one anymore? Yeah, she's like, he's like, yeah, maybe we should go out again. And she's like, oh, I don't really feel anything. I'm not, I'm not really, we're not vibing. It's not. And he's like, he immediately just lashes out. It's, it's a quintessential bad date. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's both hilarious and super cringeworthy. Um, Steve, I gotta ask you though that I I thought of the, just a question to ask you in the middle yeah. in the middle of this. Uh, do you have any weird dating stories from the eighteen hundreds when you were dating? <clears throat> Zach, I just threw in the eighteen hundreds just a, as a small jab. But do you have any weird <laughs> dating stories? <laughs> uh... Back Nothing in Puritan times on. when you were dating. I mean, people I dated may have strange dating stories, but I I didn't date a ton. Um, so I don't really have anything. That's strange. Sorry. It's kind of like not yes yep. and, but I don't know what to do with that. Riveting podcasting. Okay. Well, <sighs> okay. She then meets this guy. His name is Steve. By the way, just we're on the same page. I was going to make a joke earlier and I just forgot about it. I was going to say, this is the worst Avengers movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was going to start my review off of that, but I completely <laughs> forgot about it. Like, worst uh, Avengers movie I've ever seen in my life. Okay. That's I just assumed with Sebastian Stan in it, that it is some sort of like winter soldier. S. Well, I, I did warn you that he didn't have, he had both arms in this one. Yeah, I just, man, I just I was really disappointed Ooh, but, that it wasn't. You know, actually, you think that he had both arms? Did he <laughs> okay. have both arms? Or did he, you know, like, did he eat both arms? Or did he? Never mind. We get it, Steve. Do we do it because it's about people being eaten? Yeah, it's about, it's being, about people being eaten. Yeah, yeah. Did he eat both um, arms? 
Also, his name is Steve. And the fact that his last name is not Rogers is really disappointing. Well, it bothers me that there's a Steve and a Noah. Someone's, I mean, that's all. <laughs> okay. Because I'm Steve. Yeah, I know that. My son's name is Noah. Yeah. Were you, were you expecting this to be a family affair? No, 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 no. It's just like, I don't know. Did you sure. resonate with it more because you, like you? No, I, I didn't like the fact that her name was Noah. She should change that. Okay. <laughs> Noted. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. I don't even, I have zero, I have Go zero ahead. thoughts going in my head. <laughs> Oh, so you just kind of blankly stared at me, and I'm like, I don't know where he's going with any of this. Like, oh my gosh, he's giving me nothing, and I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so w- continuing the worst Avengers movie ever. Um, <laughs> she, uh, Noah meets this guy. His name is Steve. They meet at the supermarket, and Steve is uh, gushing. Over cotton candy grapes and how good they are. And which I've never had cotton candy grapes before, but I, I know do now. Yeah. I now want to try them. They do exist. What are you talking about? They do exist. Yeah, I don't know. I said they do exist. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's a very awkward interaction. I think they they play the part of it being awkward very well. Um, mm-hmm. But he manages to get her number. They go on a couple dates. The relationship is moving pretty fast. Um, Noah's friend, Molly, does think that this guy is being uh, super sus, as the kids would say. And um, it turns out uh, she's she's right. She's mm-hmm. she's completely right. Um, he takes her on a, a quote-unquote weekend getaway. And... Uh, one of the things that bothered me about this movie was the fact that so he's like, hey, let's go to this place that you've never been to before. She's super jazzed up about it. He picks her up in the daytime and is like, hey, we can't go tonight because of X, Y, and Z. So we'll go tomorrow. You'll just spend the night at my house. And they drive. Until it's completely dark outside. And nowhere does she go, dude, you live real far away. Right. Nowhere (laughs) is she even remotely suspicious that he picked me up in the middle of the day and we drove till it was pitch black outside. That's hours. And nowhere was she like, this seems odd. Yep. He, he, you drove out to where there is no Wait, cell phone service. That should be a red flag. It should have been a red flag from the get-go. But so it's really her fault. Right? Well, that's Reason? not what I'm saying <laughs> at all. Zach's not... a victim blaming the woman who was abused. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to anyway. I'm I, just know, saying, I know. I'm just saying. Just, well, her friend says... Like, are you dickmatized? And I laughed real hard. (laughs) Because it was such... Because, yeah, she is. Yeah, that's the truth. Is like she's she's so in the love bubble that nothing is suspicious. Saturation uh, bubble. Yeah. So, so basically, Noah... Or no, uh, Steve then basically roofies Noah. Right. And then then the title credits roll. Right. 33 minutes and 14 Is seconds that long into in? this movie. I paused the movie. So you you literally so they get she gets through the first date, they go through the, you know, explanation of her friend, I love you, I love you more like they set that up as as a as a theme between her and this friend. Then there's the, the the meeting in the supermarket. They go on like a date or two or whatever. And, uh, you know, weekend getaway, go through this whole thing. And I got so lost in the movie 
I didn't even realize that we hadn't seen the title card yet. Yeah. I mean, she takes a drink, kind of starts fading. He's sitting there. She falls on the floor. The camera, the camera goes to a wider shot of both of them. Her pass down on the floor and on the mantle of like the fireplace, it says fresh. And he just kind of gets up and basically just refills his drink or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and I paused it and was like, oh my gosh. Now we're going to get a title card. Like that was so long. It's not, I, I Googled it. It's not the longest. It's not the longest amount of time before a title card that apparently there is like some, like, I don't know, some John Wayne movie that just starts basically. And like three hours into the movie, after the movie's basically over, they oh, wow. do the title card. Um, but I don't count that because John Wayne sucks. And so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this is like the second, basically like the wow. second longest is 33 minutes into the movie. We get a title card. Um, and uh, like I said, it made me appreciate the pause and re- appreciate the movie of just how how the story was really uh, um, pulling me in. Um, and uh, so uh, Noah is bound up in the basement. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's a completely furnished basement, so it's totally cool. There's no Buffalo Bill vibes or long leg vibes going on. So super normal to be bound up in this kind of basement. Um, (laughs) just normal, normal basement, you know? I mean, everybody has people in the basement, right? Yeah. Normal basement vibes is all I'm saying. If it was unfinished, not cool to be bound up in there. But if it was a finished basement, stop complaining. It's like a hotel room. You you have air conditioning. Shut up. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> <laughs> you have air conditioning. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, knock it off. Um, there's no mothball smell down there. Shut up. Just say thank you and be quiet. <laughs> um, okay. So here's the deal. I I don't really want to give that. I enjoyed this movie so much. I want people to see it. Yeah. I, 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 this is literally the end of my notes because I literally wrote down, honestly, I don't want to give too much of this, this movie away. I really want people to go see it because it's so good. Yeah. I stopped. That's my review. My review is, I think that this movie is a five out of five. I really enjoyed myself watching it and both. Uh, what's their name? Uh, both Daisy Edgar Jones and Sebastian Stan. I think they did a fantastic job Mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, there are, there are some twists and turns that are very good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to give any more away than, than what I just did. Like, yeah, I think that people should really go see this movie. It was, it's on Hulu. I did find it on Hulu. I think it's a, it's a Hulu original. So it, it should be, I think it's only on Hulu that I saw kind of permanently on there which is which is good what people need to go watch this movie and and just uh really be invested um you know because yeah yeah i i could i want to keep talking about it but i also don't want to give away too much so you know honestly i feel like if you want to talk about it we can just stop recording and i could talk about it with you. But like <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to reveal too much to people Honestly, because yeah, I, 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 I really watch I, it again. I enjoyed this movie a lot. I want other people to enjoy it without me going too deep in what happened and why it happened. And um, I mean, yeah, because I mean, I also there, there's a there's an uh, there's a I don't want to say it's a mid credit scene, but like mm-hmm. after the initial credits, there is a small little scene where that I don't fully understand. And I kind of sure I saw that. Yeah. It's the credits roll. The the credits will roll for like 30 seconds to a minute. And then something else kind of happens. You see Mm. something else. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? There's also maybe 
some satanic stuff that's kind of going on. I don't really know anything about that. I want to watch kind of uh, some videos on it and and watch some interviews about it because I want to know a little bit more and dive a little deeper into it. But yeah, I'm going to say that this movie is five out of five. This might be one of the shortest reviews I've ever given in my life, but that's um, fun. Yeah. I, I enjoyed this movie a lot. I'm going to, Pull up Letterbox yeah. now and actually update that because yeah I'm I'll, I'm gonna have to watch that again because the the subject matter kind of is is cringy to me you know and I think it was I I, I watched this when did I watch this um so I have not been a as you know I've not been a horror fan my entire life but I. Okay, so I, I I watched this two years ago, like apparently right when it came out. Gum, and I I didn't have it as a as a movie I liked until I don't know. But so I I think I think that kind of it kind of grossed me out a little bit, just the the idea of it. But and I, I think I need to watch it again because now you know my my conscience and my my morals are completely seared, you know, from watching all, I understand. The, all the things we've watched. Yeah. Um, so I need to watch it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the base, the basic premise is like, he's a doctor and he kidnaps girls and right. sells their meat, but he basically just parcels them out. So he keeps them alive. Right. And it's, that part is very horrific. Um, yep. Yep. But it's not overly. This is more thrill. I mean, it's it, it's just good. I think that this it's movie good. is yeah. is they they do a good it's not, job. It's not of, gross for the sake of gross. It's got a good storyline. It's got great acting, etc. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's not. So there. Okay. I'm not necessarily a fan of American Psycho. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. This movie has similar has a similar thread, or at least mm-hmm. gave me that idea of a similar thread. But unlike Christian Bale, Sebastian is not like he's not quote unquote a serial killer. It is a different movie. But there's something about this movie that I like a whole lot more than mm. American Psycho. And it might just simply be the fact that like Christian plays a serial killer versus this guy is a surgeon, <laughs> you know, right. who, you know, kidnaps girls and... Yeah, he's not necessarily doing it to kill them, but eventually they will die. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. We got to yeah. keep him fresh. Yeah. Well, there's also that scene in American Psycho when, like, he throws that chainsaw down the stairwell <laughs> and like laughs, and I yeah. it's seared into my brain, and I'm like, I don't like this uh, at yeah. all. I don't like this, but I didn't get that entire vibe. Of or the entire scene of when he kills Jared Leto, like it's like, hey, why do you have newspaper? And he's putting on the rain jacket and he's talking about Huey Lewis in the news, and like that's it's a very different. But I don't know. Part of part of uh, part of me feels like there may be a thread hmm. connecting those movies a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I can see that, but. Yeah, it's guy who uh, seems like put together and you know, professional man, really not really scary, creepy guy. Yeah, yeah. So it's I think that this is a great movie. I I fully gave it five stars and cool because ever everything about ever I didn't get bored, which is already a great yeah. a great thought. But then I don't know just. Their relationship, Noah and Steve's relationship, aided all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, the acting, I thought, was really, really great. 
yeah, this this is it's a good movie. I think it's a really yeah, good, good movie. So, yeah. I don't want to spoil too much of it. Honestly, I really well, don't. Let's, let's I know that there's right there. spoilers in this movie, but there are or there's spoilers in this podcast, but like I don't this is one of those ones that I don't really want to spoil. I want people to go watch it and enjoy themselves like I did. So Yeah, all right, cool. Well let's move on to uh, uh paranormal activity. Spoiler alert, I saw what you post I saw what you gave the how many stars you gave it on Letterboxd. And mm-hmm. I want to ask you a billion questions. So just <laughs> I want to let you go and talk so you'll answer all of those questions because what the heck, Steve? I'm not saying that you need two and a half stars. Yes, I'm not saying you need to five star this movie, but also I did not expect for you to just mid this movie. It's mid, you know. I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah, but I also okay. saw this when kind of when it came out, so I was young. Oh, okay. And it was slightly Blair Witchy esque, terrifying a little bit, and I could watch maybe watch it now and go. And probably I agree with you. I didn't get a chance to rewatch this and I wanted to, but yeah, it, it's from 2007 paranormal activity is. And it's, there's like six sequels. There's a seven movies in this whole franchise, which yeah. I had no idea about. Yeah. Um, it's too many. It's too many. <laughs> it's a, it's a, they need to lot. stop. They need to stop right. making them. Uh, reviews overall, like 83 and 57 tomatoes. So 83 percent reviewers and 57 percent audience which is a big difference well a Uh, lot of the budget was just paying off the reviewers well true (laughs) uh the imdb was 6.3 out of 10 metacritic 63 percent, which is the same thing google user google users ranked it at 86 percent and letterbox is 2.9 out of 5 and there's some interesting things about this movie that i found out like it it was shot it was written and directed by the same guy, um, by the same guy, and it was shot in his house. And the it cost fifteen thousand dollars to make. They filmed it what? in seven days. Yeah, they filmed it in seven days, and he he put up he, he got the actors by like putting up signs like at a university or something saying, "We need some unknown. I need a couple of unknown actors to do a thing that you're comfortable shooting at nighttime." And not knowing what the next thing is going to be that's coming. So even the the making of it was a little bit like the uh, Blair Witch Project where they didn't know what was happening next. Right. And so that kind of led, I think that was, he was trying to kind of catch that, like that uh, authentic vibe of real scares and things like that. And so apparently it, it was shopped around a lot of places. They saw it. Somebody found it at a, a there's like a big, uh, a big horror movie convention in L.A. and in Hollywood every year. Mm-hmm. And somebody saw it at that and it made its way to Steven Spielberg somehow. And he liked it so much that he um, he 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 kind of pushed it through. But they re they redid the meet the ending to it. The original ending was different than the, the what it is now. But they spent two hundred thousand dollars to make to to do to do a new ending. <laughs> so the ending that the, the ending of her getting thrown at the camera. Well, he, the guy gets thrown at the camera, and she kind of like comes in later. That's right on her shirt, and she then she looks at the camera and like t- like screams at the camera and like turns into a like, demon face. So that's two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. What was the original ending? The original ending is she comes back up the stairs and uh, his body, you never see his body. He just uh, stays down. You hear the horrible things happening, right? Mm-hmm. And then he, she comes up the stairs and comes into the bedroom and stands there with a big like kitchen knife, like in every horror movie. And she slits her own throat and falls down. And that was the end. It, it's, it's in the Wikipedia page. There's like two alternate endings. So that's weird, um, but they didn't like that for some reason. And they, um, <laughs> I just cracks me up that the whole thing cost 15 grand and then to remake the, the, the last 
bit of it that cost two hundred thousand dollars. And I can only imagine that that happened. But that was that much money because I'm guessing they had to recreate this, recreate the sets or something to make it look seamless. Because it really is seamless. You can't tell that it was like the 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 last couple the last couple scenes were filmed like a couple of years after the first movie. The movie was actually put together, which is oh, interesting to me. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, who what is that from the time? Did, how, I'm very curious as to where they where they cut it together. I'm not quite sure. So, so he gets thrown at the camera, and I could imagine like that's where they would pick it up. So it says the so the original original ending was. Um, so they showed the original end, ending. So Paramount bought it. They bought the movie. Yeah. And they only showed it at one public viewing before it was scrapped. And two endings were developed, one theatrically released and and the other available as an alternate ending in the home home releases. Hmm. So I guess if you have the DVD, it's like an alternate ending. And uh, I guess the, the alternate ending is when she slits her throat. Okay, that's the alternate. I'm sorry. So the original ending shows her coming back upstairs with a kitchen knife and she sits on the floor. Kind of rocks back and forth like she's, free, you know, like, ah, what do I do? And the next day, her friend Amber shows up or, or calls her and visits the house and finds uh, Mika's body. And um, the policemen come and they find a possessed girl with a knife. And then she turns into her normal state and asks about Mika. And then the attic door slams by itself. And the officer panics and shoots and kills her. And the camera that's, fades to black. That's an ending? Yeah, and the camera fades to black as the police officers continue searching the house for the source of the sound. And the epi an epilogue appears, dedicating the film to the memory of Mika and Katie. So I think what they wanted to do is they, they're like, okay, that's too much. We don't want to have her dead. We want to have her alive for other stuff, whatever. Um, because they were, they were like, this is good enough. We want to maybe do a sequel. So they wanted to keep her possibly alive. She's That's in the sequel, isn't she? I've not seen them, so I'm not sure. I mean, sh she's in the credits of the sequel, so I'm not sure if it's like because they used some old footage or something. But I forget. But, I need to rewatch it. Yeah, so it was it was filmed in 2006 or seven. It didn't come out till 2009. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah, and and people thought it was real when it came out. Because the like if you there's there's no credits either before or after the movie. It just starts in. And I think right. the, I think there is a title screen, but um it's it's one of the first found footage movies that really kind of became a big deal. And the names of the, the actors, all of the actors in the movie, the names that are in the movie are their names in real life. So if you, if you Google this person's name, like, like the, the character's name, you're going to get the real person. Right. And, but, um, they're not dead. So things I liked about this movie, it was, I liked how, uh, I liked, it was kind of an original idea that, you know, uh, obviously spoiler alert, cause I, I'm going to talk more about it cause it's, that's a much older movie, but mm -hmm. it, I like the idea that, that that she was kind of the one possessed and it was like she was kind of carrying around with her instead of the house being haunted. It's like she was kind of haunted mm -hmm. slash possessed. And which would make sense why things were only happening when she was asleep. Mostly anyway, because mm -hmm. it was kind of like it was going. It was kind of like coming out when she was asleep. So I like that idea. It was kind of it was interesting. I liked how it was. It was a good twist at the end with her her being the bad guy sort of mm -hmm. uh, and which, you know, leaves lots of questions and was very intriguing. Uh, but the first half of the movie was super boring. It was just like, it went slow. And I was just continually pissed off by the Micah, Mika, whatever it's spelled Micah, but he pronounces it Mika. So I, I was con continuously annoyed by that guy, just annoyed because he's That's a her jerk, husband, right? Uh, just boyfriend. But she, he's an absolute a hole in every way. <laughs> like at one point, he's like, "Chill out and take a pill." 
<laughs> and apparently a lot of this movie was kind of ad-libbed, but, you know, because they're trying to be very uh, Blair Witch type. And because so the script, I guess, was more along the lines of make sure to say these things and, and this is what's going to happen. But it wasn't necessarily super scripted. Mm-hmm. But um, and and he's just like, she's like, promise me you won't you won't get a you won't buy a Ouija board. And he comes in with a Ouija board. And he's like, well, I didn't buy it. I borrowed it from somebody. <laughs> yeah. And he's just, and they don't have a good relationship. They, he's just a, he's just a jerk. And I, I just could not stand the guy. I could not stand the guy. Um, but she, the, the, the movie, I, 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 it didn't scare me. It didn't, it didn't. The one time I was scared was when the, near the end, like the last few minutes of the movie are, are the best. Up to that point, and I, uh, so let me finish one sentence. <laughs> up to that, uh, the, up to that point, I, I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is interesting, but for one, I have it, I have a problem with found footage movies in that mm-hmm. I think they're dumb. <laughs> okay. Unless they're done really, really, really well. And I, maybe this is because this is a, what, a 17 year old movie now? Mm hmm. Um, and that like lots has changed and styles are different and stuff. I think that this movie would have been much better had I been in a room with other people with the lights off watching just the movie. Okay. But I watched it like by my by myself, for, like mostly on my computer screen, you know, in my office, just kind of watching it, not not even doing other stuff. But um, then I watched like I finished watching it on my phone, not in the toilet. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that it, if it's one of these movies that would be better if it was in a theater, to be honest, not because big fancy special effects or whatever, but because I think it's I think it needs a communal feel to it. You, you need to realize, I don't know, there's something about being in a group of people that this just kind of changes things. I understand. So, um, but I just, I don't, it just didn't do anything. The la- the only thing that scared me was near the end where they go downstairs, they both go downstairs and you hear this, just the scr- she screams so like, I don't know, it's just like this, this like primal scream and, and which just you know, really bothered me and kind of scared me. And, uh, I mean, there were plenty of good jump scares in it, but I just thought it was kind of, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't feel much. I don't. It made me. It didn't make me feel anything. I guess. Interesting. Yeah. And so I'm. I'll be interested I'm, if you if you do watch like two and three, mm-hmm. or at least at least the second one, to see what you what you kind of think about it. I need to go back and rewatch it too. Yeah. So I, in summary, I think that it's one of these movies that it could have been better had I watched it differently, but I also. I don't know. I'm still not convinced that it's this. It is. It's as scary as everybody seems to think it is. Or I don't know. Got it. That's why I'm, I'm like really hemming and hawing about this one because I'm not sure. I, I I didn't like it, but I feel like I could have liked it <laughs> in different situations. Yeah. Or in a different time, which doesn't mean it's a bad movie. It's just that it, when I saw it, I didn't enjoy it so much. So, got it. That makes sense. It makes complete sense. And I, I, it's definitely one of those things that um, I, I was reading more about it elsewhere, and it it did kind of kick off the. I mean, Blair Witch Project really, really kicked off the whole uh, found footage thing, but apparently this one really kicked it off like next level because it was kind of a phenomenon in in America when it came out because it was so scary in the theaters and it was just something people didn't expect. Um, and the way, and the marketing was really good. Like I said, I watched one of the trailers and it, it, the most of the trailer was showing like night vision view of the people in the movie theater watching it for the first time. And people were freaking out and screaming. Right. And, um, I don't so, know. I don't know where they get those. I don't know where they get those. Cause 
Like, are these real? Uh, is this? Are you really showing me the movie? Right. Or are you really showing them the movie? Or are you are you paying them to now. jump like this? <laughs> exactly. Like, because right. they're clearly in a theater. Fine, you can you can stage right. that. You can buy out a theater. Right. But are you really? You can change the audio to make it. Right. It's all. It's always the audio in those in those clips are always. It's always indistinguishable. You cannot hear what's specifically going on. You can only see their reaction, and they're all the same. Yeah. Also, around that time, that was a very popular thing to do. Yeah. Was to show audience reaction in a movie theater, and I'm like, all of them right. are the same. You're just rec- it, it's first off, it's the same movie. They're the same people. This is propaganda. Everything is propaganda, Steve. Everything. So, like, it's always on pretty high on the list of scariest movies ever. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah. I guess, you know, meh. Only, it was only, two, only that's why I give it two and a half because it's not bad. It's not great. It's meh. You know, I, I would, I'd probably watch it again, you know, but I would, if it was with people, because it's fun to watch people scream at stuff. <laughs> right yeah well don't ruin your family too much by forcing them to watch it oh i will i'll, I'll yeah. ruin them else some other way well if you do just turn the lights off and watch it at, at night yeah okay i'll do that maybe you know just the glow of the tv lighting everything up so that way you can Some really TV get that glow. vibe yeah. yeah okay what about next time Next time movies, Zach. Yeah, buddy. Okay. I'm going to uh, spin the wheel here. I'm going to pull it up here. All right, ma'am. In the same vein of Blair Witch. <laughs> okay. Y- your movie this week is from the year 2000. Okay. And it is The Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Blair Witch 2. Yeah. Wow, Zach, this has a whole one point. uh, It's one of your... Oh, it's... uh, Why'd you do this? You give it a half star. (laughs) Here I am giving you five star movies like like a like a total gentleman, you know? Hey, <laughs> we haven't had one of these in a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's why, yeah, I'm 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 excited about you watching this one. <laughs> Cause I just want to know what you think. Oh wow. That's it. Okay. Well, you're gonna find out. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna find out. All right. I will give to you a movie that will disturb you then um, to get to get back at you ahead of time. Fantastic. So then that means the next episode is going to be a terrible episode <laughs> as far as our movies are concerned. But okay, you've got to finish it. I can't. This is not a movie you cannot stop halfway. I can't guarantee anything. You promise me, okay? Because <laughs> yeah, there's a, enough of a twist at this one in this one. That just do your best, okay? Okay, I will do my best. Um, you're, you're a grown ass man. You can do what you want to do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. We've established that in this episode. It's called the perfection. 2018. The perfection. I think I've, I think I started to watch this and then I think I did get bored. Okay. The perfection. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scary. It stars, um, M3 Gun's mom. Yeah, Allison, Allison Williams. Williams. Yeah. Well, okay. The Perfection. Mm-hmm. It's only on Netflix. I think it's a Netflix original type deal. So, there's there's a scene oh, on the bus, dude. Did you get to the bus part yet? The bus? No. Dude, the bus. And then, oh, oh the ending. Oh, the ending. 
Okay. Well, I can't guarantee so. that I won't 10 seconds skip this one. I'll I'll do my best though. I'll do if, my if best. If you do skip ahead until they're in China. I or, did uh, on the bus. I, yeah. It starts off it starts off in China, but you skip ahead till you get to the bus. The bus. I can see the beginning maybe a little bit slow just cuz it's lots of cello playing, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. But cool. The perfection. Mhm. Okay. And, and right, then man. you should enjoy the Book of Shadows. Well, I'm sure I will quote unquote enjoy it. <laughs> quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, I'll see you on the next go round, sir. If not before yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. No threats. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah, see you. All right, listeners. That's a wrap for another episode of Horrors Yet Unseen. Thanks for joining us. And we'd love for you to become part of the conversation. Just drop us a voicemail at 1216-202-5495 or email us at horrorsyetunseen at gmail.com. And keep up with the latest by following us on Instagram. That handle is at horrorsyetunseenpod. We'd also appreciate it if you like and review our show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Your support means a lot to us. See you next time.